My name is Reverend Rob Martin. I'm the pastor at the First Presbyterian Church in Athens, Ohio. And I'm here to speak on behalf of uh, our church, which in, in 2013 was awarded the uh, prize of first place in the Battle of the Buildings from the EPA for energy savings. This was a process our church went through for about two and a half years. We were fortunate enough to receive funding to have an energy audit done on our building. From that energy audit, uh, we made significant changes, put in new boilers, changed out old lighting systems for LED lights, uh, put in a hot water on demand water heater, we found ways to insulate and update our windows. And by doing so, we were able to cut our carbon footprint and realize an energy savings of over 20% in a one year period. What we were hoping to do with that is to encourage other congregations to do the same thing. Our congregations around the country have become places of refuge for people. Uh, in the winter especially, warming centers, feeding stations. We house many choirs, community choirs, community programs. Our buildings are more than just houses of worship. They are the centers of urban, rural, and suburban life. We're hopeful that what we did will be an example to other congregations that this kind of work can continue. But the only way it can continue is with partnerships. We were able to partner with our utility companies and we were able to partner with them because the state of Ohio in 2008 was able to lead the way by passing legislation that allowed that to happen. We are fearful that that legislation may end up going away and that other congregations that would like to follow what we did will not be given the opportunity. So I'm here today to stand with those who oppose the bill, to say to our legislatures and to the governor that we are hopeful that what we were able to do as a congregation will be multiplied by many other congregations in the state of Ohio. Thank you. Okay, and our next speaker is Sarah Ward. Thank you very much, Reverend Martin. And thank you, Craig, for offering prayer at the beginning of this. I think that prayer is going to be a key for us as we continue to wait the next steps of the General Assembly. I know that they are going to be, uh, they, they decided not to have their hearing today on Senate Bill 310. Mm -hmm. So. So the, the question is up as to what, what the next steps will be. But I have been asked in, in my capacity as, as Director of Ohio Interfaith Power and Light, um, on behalf of the Evangelical Environmental Network, who could not be here to join us for this event this morning, they have prepared a statement that they have asked me to read part of that will be delivered to the governor on Friday. Over 14,000 pro-life Christians asked Governor Kasich to veto Senate Bill 310 if it should come to that. On Friday, May 23rd, Ohio members of the Evangelical Envi Environmental Network will deliver more than 14,000 petitions to Governor Kasich's office calling on him to veto Senate Bill 310 pending legislation which would halt clean energy standards in Ohio. And let me read for you the petition. As pro-life Christians, we urge Governor Kasich and all members of the Ohio legislature to oppose Senate Bill 310 and keep Ohio moving in the right direction. Toxic emissions threaten the health and safety of our citizens, especially children, pregnant mothers, and the unborn. In addition to defending life, opposing Senate Bill 310 would further Ohio's production of clean energy, energy efficiency, and continue threatening thousands of good jobs and save consum consumers millions. The Reverend Mitch Hescox, who is the president and CEO of EEN, said, this legislation would halt the successful energy program that has kept our clean air, saved Ohio utility customers money, 
and created thousands of new jobs. The bottom line is Senate Bill 310 does not reflect Ohio values. That's why pro-life Christians across the state are asking Governor Kasich to be guided by his faith and veto this legislation. Thank you. And I believe our next speaker is going to be uh, Sister Leanne Jablonski. Good morning, I'm a Marianist sister based in Dayton, Ohio, a climate change scientist and educator, and I've been happy to call Ohio my home state for over 30 years. And to celebrate our progress in applying our science knowledge, engineering inventiveness, and call to wise stewardship of our planet, to developing technologies that reduce our waste and pollution, and better care for the beauty of our environment and the health of our people. I have been thrilled to be part of the growth in environmental awareness and actions for stewardship and justice among people of faith, from the Interfaith Climate and Energy Campaign to today. I come today praying that wisdom and the courage to act for justice and the health of all Ohio's people and stewardship of our valuable resources will guide our Ohio legislators and Governor Kasich. I am deeply disturbed by Senate Bill 310 and its undoing of alternative energy and efficiency incentives. We must be concerned that such steps that reverse our progress in using renewable and clean energy, this bill will only increase fossil fuel emissions, which contribute to global warming and increase our air pollution and health burdens on people. The sulfur dioxide, the nitrogen oxides, which pollute our air, and increase respiratory ailments and the potent toxin of mercury bringing other health challenges. Ohio is one of the largest fossil fuel using states in the US and is part of the high energy intensive economy with the other Midwest states around us. In fact, were our region a country, we would be in the top five in the world. These emissions contribute to warming, pollution, and an undue health and economic burden, particularly the economically poor, disadvantaged, the aged, and the young, our most vulnerable who are called to protect. And our impact touches the globe. When teaching at the University of Dayton Sister School, Shamanad in Hawaii, Iumi, who lived on an island no bigger than downtown Columbus, was struck, realizing that the ocean was rising, her fresh water was being reduced on her island, and there were salt intrusions on their land affecting crops. She asked me, a mainlander, what are you all going to do about it? Move us somewhere else and ship us bottled water? I cannot tell her story to this day without tearing up. She later said, I told you because I believe you can do something. I said back to her, we all need to do things together. And I will keep telling her story. What are we going to do about it? We have a moral responsibility to our state here and its impact on our entire planet and people. Our scriptures teach us to those who much is given, much is expected. And we are blessed in Ohio. I am very inspired by our Catholic leaders Pope Francis, in his World Day of Peace address this year, said, the human family has received from the Creator a common gift, nature. In a word, nature is at our disposition, and we are called to exercise a responsible stewardship over it. Yet so often we do not preserve nature, nor do we respect it, or consider it a gracious gift we must care for, and set at the service of our brothers and sisters, including future generations. Our Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI had previously exhorted us that technologically advanced societies must be prepared to encourage more sober lifestyles while reducing their energy consumption and improving its efficiency. At the same time, there is a need to encourage research into and utilization of forms of energy with lower impact on the environment. I am among the nearly two million Ohioans who are Catholic and proud of the leadership of our bishops. Our Ohio bishops have expressed their strong concern about Senate Bill 310 stating, 
the Catholic Conference of Ohio supports alternative energy and conservation incentives and resources. Alternative energy sources such as wind and solar benefit the environment, help reduce long-term energy costs, and offer another source for helpful job creation. We encourage the Ohio General Assembly to pursue reasonable and effective initiatives for energy efficiency and to develop alternate, renewable, and clean energy resources. Through first-hand experience, we have come to appreciate the impact the current energy portfolio standards have on improving the energy efficiency of church facilities and individual households. For example, the economic rebate incentives have allowed for affordable boiler replacement and lighting retrofit projects in many of our buildings. We understand there is an ongoing debate over the need to freeze current standards while the study takes place. Our bishops say, we ask elected officials to prayerfully consider if it would be more prudent for the sake of environmental stewardship to maintain our current policies and not freeze these standards while the study takes place. As an academic researcher, I know the importance of study and bringing all voices and all people affected to have a voice. It is the justice we are called to. However, while studying, let us not freeze the progress we are making in our conservation of resources through energy efficiency and renewables. Such a freeze could cause many students I know in the University of Dayton's Renewable and Clean Energy Program to have to sadly leave Ohio. Erica and a group of 10 others testified yesterday.